stay with you. It was a blessed connection as well as a, a spiritual as well as emotional connection that she felt that she would stay with her mother-in-law for she saw something in her mother-in-law that obviously her sister-in-law did not see. In our text it says, it begins in the 15th verse where Ruth is telling, or should I say Naomi is telling uh, Ruth to go back. She said, your sister-in-law left, you need to go back also. Uh, unto your gods and unto your people. Now Ruth was very persistent. She was persistent. And Ruth said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to take time to break away from our connection. Where you live, I'll live. Where you die, I'll die. Yes. Where you're at, I'll be there. Yes. So she was eternally connected to her mother-in-law, even though there was no need for her to be connected any longer. But she felt, listen, where you are, I'm going to go. Because she saw something in her mother-in-law, Naomi, that she didn't see in herself. Amen. Now, as I was reading this, the Lord began to bring me back to Orpha, because Orpha was a good woman in herself in that she was yet faithful, uh, even in spite of the loss of her husband, she was yet faithful and even struggled with leaving her mother-in-law. Yeah. Orpha herself, she was a Moabite, she had married one of the sons of Emelec, which, and she was brought up in her life with uh, probably, uh, not probably, but with a lot of uh, ungodly, uh, a lot of heathen worship because the Moabites were heathens and they did not believe in the God of Israel. So she had seen a lot, but yet she saw fit to try to improve herself and follow after her mother-in-law, Naomi. Or for herself, possessed many, many uh, 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 things in her life or natural excellences because she had the character of her wife because she stayed with her husband yes. even until his passing. She conducted herself even with kindness and tenderness and even as you read in the in the scriptures there was still a connection of Orpha and Naomi up until the separation they had because even though she left uh, with the struggle she still was a faithful daughter-in-law. Amen. Uh, another feature was in her life is that Naomi was from the land of Judah and Orpha was from the land of the Moabites or Moab and yet she saw fit to leave her own family mm. and follow after her mother-in-law who was going back to her ancestral home. Amen. A lot of times you can be connected to somebody. And oftentimes you don't know the connection until there's a crisis, there's a situation, there's a circumstance that comes up and you don't know why you find yourself connected to this individual. And there may not be an emotional connection, there may not be a physical connection, but it seems like for the purpose of destiny, God has you connected. I don't know what it is about God, but God will show you some stuff that's at the end of your journey and you're just beginning the task. So I'm glad that God uh, deals in destiny and not just something uh, 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 immediate, but rather something that's long term and permanent. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Now, on the way back to Bethlehem, Judah, Naomi, or should I say Orpha, as well as Ruth were following their mother-in-law. But Orpha was divided in her loyalties, such so that she was following Naomi, yet looking backwards because she still had her earthly ties as well as her emotional ties with the land of Moab. Amen. I think sometimes that the world is is such that it will cause you to be in a in a in, in a dilemma sometimes because you want to love God but your flesh wants you to love the world. Mm -hmm. And same thing was happening with Orpah. She knew that the best for her was to follow Naomi, but she was struggling because her home, her ancestry, was calling her. And as I looked at this text, I was surprised that that Orpah herself, she forsook the God of 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even though she had the example in her mother-in-law and her father-in-law. The only reason they had gone to Moab was to seek out uh, food and provision because of the famine in Bethlehem, Judah. So even though it might not have been a good idea to go to a heathen place, rather than die, they went there so they could be sustained. God sometime will have you somewhere for a, 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 a short period of time that he might sustain you. I remember when, 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 listen, when Elijah felt discouraged and despondent, even after he had done the will of God, God had to feed him with ravens in order for him to come to the point and realize that I'm going to cause you, even though I'm feeding you, I'm going to dry up the water for a minute so that you can move on. And I think in our relationship with God, God allows us to experience famine sometimes so we know what it is when we're full. Amen. Because if everything was coming our way all the time, you may never appreciate loss. You may never appreciate emptiness. And God will allow you some time to experience that the fact that you got to wait on it, it's not going to be immediate, but I'm going to bring it to pass as you put your trust in me. Because see, God is about destiny. God is about bringing to pass that which he has purposed in your life before the foundation of the world so that he himself can get all the glory. God is a jealous God. Yes. And understand this, Oprah had some problems because she was yet embracing the gods of wood, hay, and stone. Amen. And she had not fully embraced the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So she was, there was a tug of war, if you will, going on in her life so that as she walked forward, she still found herself looking backwards. And God will bring you to the place in your relationship and your intimacy with God that you will have to make a choice. Amen. You will have to decide one way or another. Either you're for me, glory to God, or you're against me. Yeah. Now some, fight, some folk might say, it's not that I'm mad at God. It doesn't mean I have anything against God. But God said, listen, let the, let, let the, if you will, let the rubber meet the road. You got to be like Joshua asked for me in my house. Amen. We're going to serve the Lord. There's got to be a separation. There's got to be a division. There's got to be a parting of two places. Somebody's got to say yes, and somebody's got to say no. And God made it clear that here is your opportunity, or to follow Naomi or to go back from that which is less than what Naomi had to offer. Glory to God. And we know what happened. They were in want, they were in separation, they were even experiencing a lot of things. But Orpha saw fit to go back. As friendly and as amiable as Naomi was, it was not enough to cause Orpha to stay. You can be nice to folk, you can be nice to family, but it doesn't mean they'll stay. Doesn't mean they will embrace your opinion. Doesn't mean they will uh, follow you. It takes the Spirit of God imparted in you to give you enough discernment and steadfastness to follow the things of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Every person is tested sooner or later. Amen. Every person is tested. The tests will vary in their severity. They will come one at a time. They'll come two at a time. Because God wants to determine how genuinely you love him uh, according to the life you profess. My Lord. You say, I'm for you, Lord. You remember Peter. Peter said, Lord, I'm willing to die right now. I'll go with you. And the Lord said, listen, Peter. Mm -mm. He said, before the cock crow three times. He said, you're going to deny me. He said, Lord, not me. I'm ready to go. Yes. And then when the cock crew, he had a problem. Because he recognized that the Lord knew that he was not thoroughly convinced of who Jesus was. Mm. So we have many things that test us. And God is not severe in our testing because God determines that we should follow him as he determined that 
not, not only Naomi, but Ruth eventually followed him. But the case or the test was to offer to follow or not to follow. And she found herself turning back. And the conversation between the two was such that, are you going your way or are you going my way? My, my, my. And from woman to woman, you've got to seize your destiny. You've got to seize your purpose. Amen. There's, a, listen, there's a choice that has to be made. There's a decision that has to be wrought. You've got to do what you've got to do in order to serve God. Amen. Anything less is not a choice. Somebody says, I'm going to be neutral. You can't be neutral with God. Amen. You're either for him or you're against him. Yes. And Oprah made her choice quite clear. When a person is tested, an Oprah type spirit will go back because they will embrace what they left. They're unwilling to leave, listen, they leave their comfort zone and walk into, if you will, the supernatural, or walk into the blessing that is yet theirs upon their belief. Orpah said, no, no, I, I know where I came from, and she obviously thought about her own parents, thought about her own mother, thought about her own family, but she embraced that more than she embraced the infinite possibilities to embrace God. Amen. Listen, she had been blessed under the watchful eye of her mother-in-law. She had been blessed in the family of Emelech and Naomi. Yes. But she saw fit to say, you know what? I think I'm going to go back to less. You ever go back to less? Go back to less. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Listen, you ever feel in yourself say, listen, I tried that before and it didn't do nothing for me. Why would I try it again? Mm. But Oprah tried it again. She recognized that the pool of the world, the pool of the stuff, caused her to forsake the blessing. Have you ever, uh, listen, forsook the blessing of God for the pool of something less? Mm. Lord have mercy. Have you ever been tempted to the point to say, listen, it's not working, I'm giving it up, and then the grace of God sustains you. God sometimes got to hold your feet to the fire or you would run from the test. Amen. I don't want to go through this no more, Lord. God said, oh, no, no. You got to stand there until you feel the heat and know that you have to make a choice. Some fires you got to go through. Other fires, God will give you peace and cause you to escape them. The Hebrew boys went in the fire because they trusted God to bring them out. And when they came out, they didn't come out singed. They didn't come out burned. But they came out giving testimony that we were not alone. God was with us because we made a choice. Mm. I think that's the key right there. Oprah was unwilling to make a choice. She was that close to destiny. Yes. Mm. That, close. that close. Can you imagine the woman with the issue of blood? That close. Who was that close to destiny. And she herself was, if you will, invisible. Nobody saw her. Everybody ignored her. She was just part of the crowd. She was invisible. But because of destiny, she saw fit to press her way, crawl on her belly if she had to, to touch Jesus because she said, if I but, but touch the hem of she realized that her destiny was in the touch of reaching out by faith and taking God at his word. Nobody likes me because I'm already offended. I have a sickness where nobody wants to be around me. But I'm, I'm, I'm invisible now. But if you look in scripture 2,000 years later, she's infamous. Amen. Everybody knows about the woman with the issue of blood. Yes, thank you, Lord. Mm, she went from invisible to infamous by seizing her destiny. Amen. Mm, and I'm willing to let the crowd stop her from getting where she needed to be. Unlike Arthur, who turned and went the other way, unwilling to seize her destiny. Now let us consider Ruth in her test. Ruth 
saw fit yes. to not only talk to, but listen carefully to the words of Naomi. For even though Naomi said to her, I don't have anything left to give you. My Lord. Mm. I'm too old. I cannot have two more sons to give to you ladies who have lost your meat. Yes. I can't do the picture over again. We can't start over. I'm too old to do it. Glory to God. So really, it's not worthwhile staying with me. Now, now Ruth is listening to the exhortation of Naomi. And she listens so intently that she finds herself convinced that her destiny, glory to God, is tied to Naomi. Now, Naomi tries to discourage her. Because the scripture says here in the, oh, I love this. The scripture says here in the, let me read the verse. In the 18th verse, when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. The NIV translation says when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her to leave. Amen. She stopped saying, go, go. And as I said, everybody's tested. Now, as I was studying this, there are certain Hebrew writers and scholars, as well as historians, say that when someone wanted to be of the Jewish faith, they would call them, well, you're almost in training, like an apprentice, but they would call them a proselyte. Yes. Because you're willing to follow me and my teachings and eventually my God. Now, the Hebrew writer said that the conversation between Orpha, Ruth, and Naomi was a lot more stringent and difficult than the scriptures declare because they knew what it was. That a proselyte had to be examined. A proselyte had to be questioned. A, qu a proselyte had to be put through the fire to really realize what, what, what steps you were about to take. So the conversation is, as one Hebrew historian says, listen, uh, do you understand that we are commanded uh, to keep the Sabbath and the holy days? And we're not allowed to travel any more than 2,000 cubits. And Ruth says to Naomi, whether you go, I go. And then Naomi says, we are commanded not to be around Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Ruth answered, where you lodge, I will lodge. And then Naomi said, we are commanded to observe 113 precepts. Ruth answered, what thy people observe, I will observe. Amen. So it was, it, it was a test. It was a conversation between two women such so that she was being examined whether or not it was worthwhile to follow. It wasn't just saying, I'm coming. I mean, Ruth got to the point where she was almost begging to go. Glory to God. Even though she was put up with all kinds of arguments to leave. I recognize now why Job said in his misery, in his time of suffering, and when they said, you ought to curse God and die. Job, you ought to give up. It's not worth it. You're sick. You're on your big deathbed. You're right at the point of dying. Job, turn around and go back. Job had heard and seen the testimony of God and realized that God had been better to him than he'd been to himself. Amen. And Job declares out of his mouth, though he slay me, though he, slay me. Yeah. he said, yet will I trust him. I understand how complex it is sometimes. I understand the weight and the burden of following the Lord. But Ruth said, listen, if you die today, I'll die with you. Oh God, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure the test kept on going. He said, we're not, we're not commanded to worship or any 
be my God. I don't care that you just told me I can't do the strange gods, but I'm willing to give up the strange gods in order to have your God. Yeah, thank you, Lord. What a test. What a testimony. Oh, God, I thank you. And then I'm sure in the writer says here, he said, listen, you got to understand, too, this move. Uh, we have four kinds of capital punishment. We have criminals who are stoned, are burned, are beheaded, or hanged if you commit a capital crime. Yeah. And Ruth said, listen, whatever matter I die, I die. We have a house of burial. And Ruth said, wherever you get buried, I'll be buried. It doesn't and listen, I don't mind the degree or the test. He said, Lord, your God is going to be my God. Oh, God, I thank you. There was a test. There was a promise. Can you imagine woman to woman having this kind of conversation such so that she said, I'm not leaving you. I can imagine she held on to her ankle. I can imagine she grabbed her leg. I can imagine she said, Naomi, I'm not going nowhere without you. Amen. Mm. Oh, God, I thank you. Ruth seized her destiny. Glory to God. She moved from service to God to surrender with God. Yes. Mm -hmm. She said, you know what? I'm willing to surrender everything and all that I have to do, I'll do. Oh, God, I thank you. She sees her destiny. Woman to woman, they communicated. She removed, removed listen, she moved from emotion to devotion. Yeah. With God. Thank you, Lord. She said, Naomi, wherever you go, <laughs> I'll go. What you do, I'll do. What you say, I'll answer. Whatever it is, I'll do it because you've communicated something to me that lets me know it's worthwhile and that my destiny is connected to you. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to do like offer and go back. I can't go back to less because what you have, or listen, what I see in you is more than I can ever receive. But I got to follow. I got to do that which God has You got to understand, they went to Moab because they were starving. Mm -hmm. They went to Moab because they didn't have means to live. But because she trusted God, because. she moved from destruction to distinction. Because now she believed God yeah. and was trusting God. I always say this here in the beginning, trusting God for the results. Yes. Yeah. When you take care as for his word. Oh God, I thank you for your word. It's very likely that this conversation took place because they weren't gentle when it came to proselytes. Everybody who desired to be of a particular faith, and in this case the Jewish faith, had to go through a regiment of questions and answers. Such so that Ruth said, wherever you die, I'll die. Wherever they bury you, they'll bury me. Whatever you ask me to do, I'll do it. Isn't that what God asks us to do? If you keep my commandments, if you trust me, if you surrender your life, he said, I'll give you that which you can't buy. He said, I'll do for you that which you can't do as you put your trust in him. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. The old Syrophoenician woman whose daughter, glory to God, had a demon. Yes. And she went to Jesus and she was, listen, she was an outcast. She was somebody that wasn't even supposed to be in the number. Yes. And she said, listen, Lord, I, I'm an outcast. I, you, you, there's nothing you can do with me other than me be at my point of need. Uh, you can call me a dog. You can call me anything. But God, right now I'm depressed. Uh, right now I'm discouraged. But God was able to move her to a case of depression, to determination, so that she was able to have the courage to believe God. Amen. And God will make a shift when you're talking about destiny. God will move you from, listen, isolation to intimacy. God will move you from division or to victory when you put your trust in him. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I thank you. And, it's, and Ruth's story didn't end there. When Naomi 
no longer could shut her up. The Bible said they ended speaking. Naomi said, this, I've tried everything. I told you how, how, how tough it's going to be. And you're still willing to follow. Oh, God, I thank you for conviction to follow God. Woo, Lord, we sing that Lord song that we follow him. I will follow you, Lord. Mm. Whatever you take me to and whatever you take me through, God, I'll follow you. Oh, God, I thank you for your word. God is faithful to his word and faithful to his promise. So, oh, God, I thank you for who you are. You know, God is good. God is able, more than able to do what he has promised. Yes, he is. Ruth went on to be blessed. Yes, she did. Ruth went on to be what she could have never done had she not seized her destiny. Yes. Seized her purpose. Seized it. She went from a heathen uh -huh. to an heiress. Uh -huh. She went from being broke and disgusted and despondent to being an heir to the promise of God. Amen. By seizing her destiny. Naomi was responsible for guiding her in the field to her kinsman redeemer. And after she met her kinsman redeemer, God used him to, to, to redeem her so that the blessing of God could come through the house of God by the purpose of God and the plan of God. And we know she had a son and his name was Obed. And Obed, if you go down the line, was the father of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David. So God had a purpose. But she seized her destiny. Yes. But she didn't go back like off. No, she didn't. Mm. She said, you know what? In order for me to have the God of Israel, I got to seize it and act like I want it. And she seized her destiny and saw the, listen, the answer, saw the key in her mother-in-law, mm. Naomi. Naomi. I was listening, to, I, I was listening in my spirit, if you will, and actually reading in the word of God. And I thought, I said, Lord, I said, the only, what, there's a lot of uh, examples, but the only example that came to me was the person of John. And how John was that disciple that laid his head on Jesus' breast at the table. And John saw fit to be the disciple that the scripture says whom Jesus loved. Not that he didn't love them all. But John had an intimate and a, a personal relationship and an intimacy that God speaks of such. So he said, I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. And God had a way of, 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 if you will, manifesting that love even before the disciples. And as I was looking, I looked in the first John, I looked at the Gospels, and the Gospel again expressed the love of God. But if you look at first John 1, the scripture says here, and it's, a, it's, it's almost a love letter, but it's a word of intimacy letting us know that the, the, the apostle John knew he was connected to his destiny in the person of Jesus Christ. He says in 1 John 1 and 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, he said, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For this life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, glory to God, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard declaring unto you that ye also may have fellowship. He said, listen, you want some destiny? You want some purpose? He said, have fellowship with Almighty God, with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you. He said that your joy, mm, Maybe fool. You know, Orpah never got satisfied because she was never connected. In, uh, listen, never connected to her destiny. Had she got connected to her destiny and walked in the path that, that Naomi walked, she could have, listen, she could have had joy unspeakable and full of glory. Mm. From woman to 
to woman. Mm. They talked until they stopped speaking. And Ruth came out of it, seizing her destiny. Thank you. She went from desperation mm. to destiny, destruction to destiny, because she refused to let it go. Oh, God, I thank you. God had to give you something to chew on, and you can't seem to let it go. Well, she couldn't let it go and recognize that her destiny was in the person of Naomi. Yes. And if she remained steadfast, yes. even when Naomi said, you need to go back. Oh, God, this is for somebody. Because the enemy will tell you to go back. Go back. But the Bible says she remained steadfast. So her destruction didn't allow, didn't listen, didn't prevent her from being determined. Mm. She said, Devil, you a liar. Yep. Mm. He said, Naomi, I love you, but I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay steadfast in my purpose, steadfast in my resolve to believe God, steadfast in following you. Wherever you go, I'm going. Whatever you do, I'm doing. And Naomi, by the hand of God, directed and guided her life. Mm. And she seized her destiny yes. and became the person, the woman, the individual, that God had determined her to be before the foundation of the world. When God gives you a conversation, whether woman to woman yes. or man to man, yes. whoo, understand the conversation is about your destiny, not about what's going on right now, but it's about your destiny. And you need to give in to how God is speaking mm. so that you can walk and follow the footprints the steps of a good man are indeed ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Amen. Orpha delighted in what she heard. Yes. She delighted herself in the things that were said. Yes. Such so, glory to God, that from woman to woman, she sees her destiny. God bless you. God bless you. I'm so glad.